In Lesson 7, we're going to explore the unit rate as the constant of proportionality. Example 1 begins by giving an example of a possible problem in the national forest. The wildlife conservationists were concerned that deer population might not be constant or spread out evenly across the national forest. So they ran a study and found 144 deer in a 16 square mile area, 117 deer in a 13 square mile area, and 216 deer in a 24 square mile area. We'll look at those three ratios to see if they have some similarity or if they are proportional to determine whether there should be a reason for concern. I'll leave part A for you to consider on your own why it would matter that the deer population is not constant and we'll focus on the math of it. Part B asks for the population density of deer per square mile. So we're going to create a table using those three ratios that we saw at the top. In our table, we'll put square miles and then the number of deer. And our final column will be used to find the calculations. So in the first example, there were 16 square miles and 144 deer in each in that section. The second example was 13 square miles with 117 deer, and our third example was 24 square miles with 216 deer. Then we will go to our calculation column, and we want to know how many deer per square mile, look at it, deer per square mile, meaning that our unit is the square mile. We always divide the other number by our unit to find the unit rate. So we're going to divide 144 deer by 16 square miles and we find that to be 9 deer per square mile. In the second sample 117 divided by 13 will also give us 9 deer per square mile. And in our third sample, 216 divided by 24, by no surprise, is also 9 deer per square mile. So that follows that the unit rate of deer per one square mile is 9. Our unit rate is the constant of proportionality. So we can now say that the constant of proportionality is 9, meaning that the relationship between square miles and number of deer is multiplying by 9. The meaning of the constant of proportionality, you can fill that in. Now what they ask us to do is to find the deer per square mile to determine how many deer there are for every 207 square miles. If we know from above that there are nine deer per square mile, we can then find the number of deer in any particular area. So we'll take 207 and multiply it times nine deer per square mile. And that will give us 1,863 deer in a 207 square mile space. Finally, Question D asks us to use the unit rate to determine the number of square miles in which you would find 486 deer. So since we are working backwards, instead of multiplying, we would divide. And we would take 486 deer <clears throat> divided by 9 deer per square mile. And that would give us 54 square miles. At this point, it's important for us to just review a couple of vocabulary terms. First of all, the constant specifies a unique number, 
That's why when we called it the constant of proportionality, we were talking about a number that showed the re proportional relationship between those two columns. A variable is a letter that represents a number. So in the case of our proportional relationship, it would be described by a set of ordered pairs in which we have x and y, and k would be our constant of proportionality. So the equation y equals k times x would show k as the constant of proportionality. Continuing on with example two, Brandon came home from school and he needed cookies for his entire grade level. As a matter of fact, he needed three cookies for each of the 96 students in seventh grade tomorrow. So Brandon and his mother have determined that they can fit 36 cookies on two cookie sheets. We're going to explore whether the number of cookies is proportional to the number of sheets that are going to be used in baking. So we will create another table that shows the data for the number of sheets needed for the number of cookies that are needed. As we did in our last table, we'll set those first two columns up. Number of cookie sheets is going to represent the X value. X always comes first. And the number of cookies baked will represent our Y value which is always the second number in our table. And we have a third column for us to show our, our calculations. So if we have two cookie sheets, Brandon and his mother look up in the problem, determine that they can fit 36 cookies on two cookie sheets. So if we have two cookie sheets, 36 cookies are baked. If we were to have four cookie sheets, 72 cookies would be baked. And we'll go over to the side and calculate what the unit rate is by dividing the y value by the x value. That's typically how we do this. Take the second number, divide it by the first, which would give us 18 cookies per sheet. We'll look at the second values to make sure that it is actually a proportion. And 72 divided by 4 is also 18. So our unit rate for the number of cookies on a cookie sheet is 18. Since Brandon needs more than 72 cookies, we'll extend our table to some higher values. Skipping ahead to 10 cookie sheets, we could fit 180 cookies on 10 cookie sheets. And proving again the constant of proportionality, 180 divided by 10 is 18 cookies per cookie sheet. Finally, we'll go to 16 cookie sheets, which is 288 cookies. And 288 divided by 16 cookie sheets equals 18 cookies per cookie sheet. So our unit rate then is 18, meaning 18 cookies per one cookie sheet. The constant of proportionality is the same as the unit rate. The constant of proportionality is 18. That is the number that we are multiplying by our x value to get our y value. Every time, 2 times 18 equals 36. 4 times 18 equals 72. 10 times 18 equals 180, and 16 times 18 equals 288. The meaning of the constant of proportionality in this problem is that we can fit 18 cookies per cookie sheet. In part B, it took two hours to bake eight sheets of cookies. If Brandon and his mother began baking at 4 p.m., when will they finish baking the cookies? 
And we find that if it takes two hours to bake eight sheets of cookies, we would need twice that t amount of time to bake 16 sheets of cookies. So we would add four hours onto our 4 p.m. Two hours for eight and two hours more for another eight. And they would be finished baking cookies at 8 p.m. Our final example in this lesson is an example talking about crepes. The recipe makes 20 crepes with a certain amount of flour, milk, and two eggs. And the girls know they'll have, they already have plenty of flour and milk, but they need to determine the number of eggs that they need to make 50 crepes because they're not sure they have enough eggs for the recipe. Looking for the constant of proportionality we would consider the number of eggs necessary to make the crepes. So we need two eggs for every 20 crepes. Looking back at our recipe, 20 crepes with two eggs. If we simplify that ratio, we're going to find that one egg would be needed to make 10 crepes. And we would note that that is a unit rate because we are talking about one egg. Remember, a unit rate is talking about one of something. And then if we turn that rate into a ratio, that would become one-tenth. Ratios do not concern themselves about the types of units that we're talking about. Ratios are simply the numbers. The constant of proportionality in this particular problem means that one egg is needed to make 10 crepes. And so we follow it up with how many eggs will be needed for 50 crepes. If one egg is needed for 10 crepes, we could make an equivalent ratio to find the number of eggs needed for 50 crepes. One-tenth, if we multiply both parts of that ratio by five, would translate to five fiftieths, meaning that there are five eggs needed for 50 crepes.